it's Penny here and today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in November. I'm a little bit behind where I wanted to be telling you about this but that's okay. It's been a busy month leading up to Christmas but regardless as usual I'm going to do this book battle style which means that I pair up all the books and battle them against each other until we come up with the champion of the month. And I do think this month I'm going to try and split it into two shorter videos so my book battle is basically split into one section which is mostly YA slash middle grade fantasy and then the other section is mostly adult books. I think there's another YA book slipped in there but it's a more mature YA book so we're just going to include it to make the tournament balance out. So this video is going to be all about the YA middle grade fantasy books and then I will link when it exists the other video with the rest of the battle. So with that all explained, let's get into round one of our YA middle grade fantasy side of the battle. And our first battle is going to be between Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker and The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Katie O'Neill. So firstly, Over the Woodward Wall. This is actually written by Shauna McGuire and it is essentially the book that is referenced within Middle Game, which is Shauna McGuire's adult fantasy. I don't know what exactly genre it is. I guess it's fantasy. It's all about these twins who are using alchemy to essentially become gods or at least other people are trying to manipulate them into being gods and one of the characters in this world is a deborah baker and she writes this children's book to basically get a bunch of ideas into the world so that then she can use certain alchemical powers i think that's how it worked it's been a while since i read middle game and i need to read it again so over the woodward wall is that children's book that's referenced in middle game and it's about these two children called avery and zib one is very good at following the rules and very tidy and strict the other one is much more eccentric and likes to do things her own way. They end up in this magical world following the improbable road towards the impossible city and it's just a very whimsical story with all sorts of very strange and magical ideas and I really love the way that Shauna McGuire writes these very whimsical fairy tale type stories. She has such wonderful ideas and I think if you really like the Wayward Children series also by Shauna McGuire that you would like this book but I would also say like the Wayward Children series this is relatively short. And the ending was completely unsatisfactory for me because I thought this book was going to be a standalone but in fact it's actually the beginning of a series. It's very clear from the ending that it's not the ending and I assume there will be more books following on at some point but it's so short that I really feel like there was no reason why she couldn't have just continued the story and wrapped everything up within one book. It was just incredibly frustrating to get to the end and be like they didn't finish the quest? So I was a bit disappointed with that and honestly even though I enjoyed the rest of the book it's made me have like bitter memories about that book and kind of tainted the whole enjoyable experience. So if you go in with the correct expectations maybe you won't mind that. Then the next book is The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Katie O'Neill. So this is the third book in this Tea Dragon series where it's just a beautiful children's picture book series about these people who raise tea dragons so they're dragons that grow tea leaves on their back and you can make tea from them and the the main theme of the story was just about finding your place in the world and I guess letting go of the expectations you had of what your life was going to be and finding your own path that really suits you. I did really like the lessons in it. I thought it was really beautifully done. The art is really beautiful. There were some pages that I just loved. The colors just so beautiful but at the same time I will say it's quite slow and I do wonder whether as this is targeted towards children I'd love to see a review from someone who had a child read it like were they bored because the pictures are cute but the story is a bit slow and it felt like a little bit repetitive and a little bit padded out in parts but still I did enjoy it I'm not sure whether if I'd actually bought it rather than just getting it out of the library whether I would have thought that I got my money's worth but still it's really beautiful. If you like the first two Tea Dragon books you'll probably like this third one as well. In fact I think that the third one was better than the second one. So I'm not sure about where the first one goes in that ranking because it's been a little while. So then when it comes to deciding which one of these books is better for the book battle. I really have to like breathe deep and try to overcome this bitterness I have towards Over the Woodward Wall. <laughs> because I think 
over the Woodward Wall was better. There was a lot more to the story, there was a lot more ideas, it was really beautiful writing. It's just that ending. <sighs> Maybe I'll like it more when I finally get the next book. Will the next book wrap things up? I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna put Over the Woodward Wall through to the next round. Okay, then the next battle is between The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman and Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. So The Deck of Omens is the second book in a duology following on from The Devouring Grey. In this book we have a town that is protected by these four founding families that each have different kinds of magical abilities and they are protecting the town from this demon type creature that's locked away in this fog, the grey. But the different families are also kind of fighting against each other in order to be the most powerful of the founding families and as well the generations of these different families are kind of vying against each other for power as well. And I think learning about this world and seeing those conflicts was what really interested me in the first book. Unfortunately I did feel like there was a little bit less of that in the second book. And that the second book was just much more focused on the relationships but not the relationships I wanted to focus on. And I wasn't really that happy with the way people were romantically paired off. I know a lot of people like the bi representation in this book and I mean it's good that it's there but I think just this is one where I'm not really the target demographic. It's a YA book and so it was focusing on this romantic relationships the kind of stuff that teens care about that I don't really care about. I wanted more of the magic and the intergenerational conflict and so I didn't get what I wanted but I think a lot of people who liked the first book will like the second book. Just maybe not for me and I, I mean I didn't dislike my reading experience. <laughs> I just wanted something slightly different. Then the next book in this battle is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. This is the second book in the Grishaverse trilogy. So the first book being... Why do I start a sentence when I don't know how to end it? What's it called? Shadow and Bone. And then I've still got to read the last one, Ruin and Rising. So in the first book we have this girl named Alina who is a map maker and she discovers that she has these magical powers and gets involved in the politics of the Grisha who all have different kinds of powers and they're led by the Darkling who is probably not a good guy but maybe a good guy. It likes to try and confuse you but he does some pretty crappy things. So this is another one where primarily it's really focused on the romance even though there's this really cool magical element and it does explore the magical element but not as much as I wanted it to. <laughs> And to be honest, pretty much the whole time I was reading this, I was just incredibly bored. I felt like at the beginning, what happened just turned around the whole ending of the previous book. So that felt pretty pointless. I got really frustrated with the main character, Elena, because she's so amazing but so insecure. And I know that's very common in YA books because often when you're a teen, you are very insecure. And so it's kind of trying to show you that you know, maybe your insecurities aren't based in reality, but maybe they are. I don't know, that's not very nice. But like, I don't know, I just don't find that particularly interesting to read about. I also think all of the love interests are not interesting and they don't really interact with each other like adults, but then that's because they're not adults, but at the same time they're doing things as if they are adults. It's that typical YA fantasy problem where they want the characters to be teens so that they can relate to the readers that they're targeting but they also want them to be like leading kingdoms and stuff like that which just isn't necessarily 100% realistic. So I think for both the books in this battle that I just I wasn't the target demographic so I was a little bit disappointed in both of them but I was definitely more disappointed in Siege and Storm although I have heard from a lot of people that that is the book in the trilogy that they enjoy the least so I mean fingers crossed for the last book in the trilogy. Regardless I did enjoy the Deck of Omens slightly more and so I'm gonna put the Deck of Omens through to the next round. Okay then we move on to round two. Our first battle is The Golden Tower by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black up against Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. 
So, The Golden Tower is actually the fifth and final book of the Magisterium series. This is all about this boy named Cal, who has always been told by his father that he doesn't want to go to magic school because all magicians, wizards, whatever they're called, aren't to be trusted. But of course, he does end up going to magic school and he ends up learning about his relation to this big bad evil guy, you know, gotta have one of those big bad evil guys in these kind of stories. A lot of people would say this is very similar to Harry Potter and there are a lot of parallels but I do think the core idea that this book is looking into is whether it would be okay to bring people back from the dead um, and the different things that people might do around that that might be either good or bad. So I think this final book really looked at that moral dilemma very well and I enjoyed it. I do think that it was completely unrealistic that all these adults who were very experienced at magic just sent these young teens, I think they're very young because this is like borderline middle grade, so very young, just sent them off to fight this big bad evil guy. Like they didn't even try to interfere with the battle at all. It just doesn't make sense why they would be the best people for the job. No, it doesn't make sense. And I guess that was probably for this whole series, uh, the way that it went. You have to overlook a few things that don't make sense, but overall the characters are fun to read about. The story is quite fast paced and kind of keeps you interested and it does have some interesting ideas. So I did actually quite enjoy it. So then, putting it up against Over the Woodward Wall, we end up with the same problem, where for most of Over the Woodward Wall, I would 100% easily have put it above the Golden Tower, just because the writing is really amazing, it's whimsical, the ideas are really cool, and like, it's just so unique, whereas the Golden Tower, like, it's a good story, but it's definitely not unique, and it's it's just more of a, like, a fun, light-hearted read. But then, that ending of Over the Woodward Wall was just so unsatisfying. I am still so mad about it and it's been ages since I finished reading it. <sighs> but I do think if I was going to recommend a book to someone, I would probably recommend Over the Woodward Wall. I would give a lot of warnings about the fact that there is not a satisfying ending so that they're prepared, but I think Over the Woodward Wall is really worth the read if you're prepared. So I'm going to put Over the Woodward Wall through to the next round. Then we have Swamp Thing Twin Branches by Maggie Stevada up against The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman. So Swamp Thing Twin Branches is a graphic novel by Maggie Stevada and I didn't write down the artist but I did think the art wasn't exactly my favorite style in general but it was still okay. It does have some really wonderful color choices and there were some pages that I thought were absolutely amazing. So the idea of this story is that we have these twin brothers and their parents end up uh, splitting up and because of that they go to stay with their cousins. One of them is very popular and like a cool dude and the other one is much more introverted and shy and he just wants to spend time doing this scientific plant study that he is doing where he's trying to get plants to remember things from their previous plant, like from the plant that they were previously cut from. So getting plants to remember the memories of another plant essentially. So this scientific study kind of goes awry and then um, it kind of ends up affecting him and some other people and some animals in a very exciting way. The plants outside my window right now are getting very excited so they must like this story. I actually really liked it. I thought the characters were really relatable and I thought the, the plant science memory side of things was used in a really interesting way. Also our main character has diabetes and that was incorporated in quite a good way and I suspect uh, that Maggie Stevada drew on her recent experience of being quite ill with this weird adrenaline thing that she had going on. Anyway, I think that she drew on some of those experiences to put into this character's experience and so I liked that and I just I really hope that there's going to be more of this. I, from the ending, it did kind of wrap up and I get the idea that it's set up for more books in this world if this first one does well. So I'm hoping this first one will do well. If you haven't read it, like get it from the library, buy it if you can, because it's a pretty cool story. If you like weird plant science stuff, but also just like relatable teen stuff, but not like annoying teen stuff. Again, let's remember YA. I am not the target market for YA. 
Anyway, I think you can probably tell, putting this up against the deck of omens, I am going to put Swamp Thing Twin Branches through to the next round. Okay, so now we are on to the semi-finals, but this will be the final for this YA middle grade side of things. So we've got Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker, up against Swamp Thing by Maggie Stiebatter. I'm not sure what I should choose. I just, I'm still so mad. Why am I so mad about the ending of Over the Woodward Wall? I think because it's pretty much the same thing with the Wayward Children series. They're like such short books and she just doesn't fill them out. Like often she skips over important parts. She doesn't quite give them satisfying endings. And it just feels like she could. She could, but she wants to write these short stories that you can just pump out really quickly and sell lots of and it also doesn't really make sense that these short small books are still the same price as a longer book and I just really like these stories so I want more of them without having to wait for more books to come out. So I think purely because I'm mad and I just don't want to put a book that I'm mad about through to the finals, I'm going to put Swamp Thing Twin Branches by Maggie Stevetta through to the finals and then in my next video I'll put it up against the winner of this adult side of the tournament and we'll see who the actual winner of the month is. I did really like Swamp Thing Twin Branches and I am really hoping for more in that series. I think there's still a lot more I'd like to find out about the characters and I think Maggie Stevetta has such a creative mind that she can really do some cool stuff with this weird plant science magic thing that's going on with memories. It's so cool. And it's definitely one that I haven't seen many people talk about even though I know Maggie Stevetta and The Raven Cycle are fairly popular. So like why is Swamp Thing not getting the same hype? I mean it's, it's actually similar in terms of the like friend dynamics and is what you get in the Raven Cycle, except that it's a graphic novel, so it's a bit different. But I think if you like the friend group and the weirdness of the Raven Cycle, then you'll definitely like Swamp Thing. That's what I think. Try it. See if I'm right. And uh, then let me know down in the comments, or if you've read any of the books that I've talked about today, I would also like to know down in the comments what you thought about them, or if you're thinking about reading any of them. Otherwise, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well, and I will see you next time. Oh,